anything could happen at any time, and we know this. And then what happens? Boom, you're in jail, away from your family, because you didn't want to walk right down the street and go home, or you're shot up, or you're even dead. And now you leave behind your sons. Like the little monster says, what are we doing to make sure that the, my son doesn't live the way I live, or your son doesn't live without you? That's, that's part of the problem. We start passing our conflicts on to our kids, you know what I mean? Passing it to the next generation. But what is that doing? It's, it's, it's projecting right into our world. See, most fathers say, this little Barney on a flip. Nah, this ain't little Barney on a flip. This is little Kevin Dwayne White, you know what I'm saying? They label your child, and for the rest of their life, they're called him that. You know what I'm saying? You, got, you can't let people label your child. If we can do any hands-on amongst ourselves, not, not outside help, not the government, not the police, but if, and not even the so-called civilian community. I'm talking about just straight-up gangsters. If we can do anything, the first thing we need to do is stop naming our kids after us. Stop saying that's Little Bone or that's Little Babyface or that's Little Time Man or that's Little B-Rock or whatever. got to stop it. Once you say that, it's the lock I choose to live. You start, you accept anything. You accept it, you know, to getting hurt and hurting people. You accept it because this is the box I put myself in. Give them their first and their last name, their real given name, instead of giving them these street names at an early age, at eight years old, nine years old. We gotta quit passing on our conflicts to our kids. We would call people, we wouldn't even call them people. It's them to stay, you know. He wasn't a crip, he was a crab. And for the crips, you know, they're not killing the blood, they're killing the slob. Then I was calling it killing, killing because it was war. Just as it's easy for me to kill a Jap or gook or a, a crab, you know what I mean? It's, it's easy to kill a nigga. It's easy for niggas to kill niggas. You understand what I'm saying? I think we gotta really get that out of our vocabulary, especially in the urban communities, because we're so quick to do stuff to each other. Man, I'ma ride on these niggas. Fuck them niggas. Nigga, give me your watch. Nigga, give me your car. Because it's hard to take a car from a brother. It just doesn't add up. I pull a gun on you and say, brother, break yourself. Or let's go ride on them brothers. And, you know, you deface your enemy and call them something else. So I would say, I got one. You know what I mean? It wasn't really a human. It's almost like going fishing or going hunting. Hey, these guys come, hey, I got one. You got one? Yeah, I got one. I called him up on Sunset Street. He's laying out there right now. You can go see, you know? So it's easy if you take the human factor off of a body and take away his name, take away his face, we say, I kill them. You kill a dog, you kill a cat, you kill a spider, you know. But really, it's, we got, you know, now I look at it, you know, it's, you know, I murdered someone. I murdered a real person. I murdered you know, somebody's nephew, cousin, son. And then that's when, you know, you kind of get at war with yourself.